Hello, beautiful, wonderful people. <laughs> My name is Bonnie Northgraves, and this is another episode of Jazz Storytime. If you're new here, welcome, and if you've been following along, as many people have, thank you so much, and welcome back. You're all looking absolutely smashing today in your quarantine vest. So chic, so spring 2020. Ugh. All right, so focusing here, we're going to be talking about a tune from 1917 written by a Canadian guy. And we've already talked about him before and we'll talk about why a little bit later, but this is a song by Sheldon Brooks. So without further ado, let's jump into it. Okay, I'm going to be playing this in the key of C major. Why not? I'm going to do the verse. All right. you have the tune. All right, so written in 1907 uh, by Sheldon Brooks. This is called the Dark Town Strutters Ball. Sheldon Brooks also had a big success, which we talked about before, uh, when he got his song uh, Some of These Days into the hands of Sophie Tucker. And from there, whew, it was like fireworks, it really took off. Uh, so just a little bit of a backstory on Sheldon Brooks. He was a Canadian who moved to the States in the teens of the 1900s. Um, and he was a cafe pianist in Detroit and Chicago. He was also a comedian and he did impersonations as well, um, which I don't think is maybe common knowledge. Um, he was billed as one of the most popular black entertainers pre the 1920s. So he must have been pretty funny, I imagine. Must have been pretty good. So he wrote this song after he had the success with Sophie Tucker and um, he sold millions of copies of sheet music. And that seems kind of like a weird thing, but we have to remember that in the teens and in the 20s, um, another way people consumed music, um, which is very different from today, I mean people still do, but quite different from today, is that they would buy the sheet music, take it home, and learn how to play it themselves. Very DIY. DIY chic. Ha! Um, yeah, so uh, he had a lot of success with that, with the sheet music sales. It was also recorded by a ton of bands, um, including the ODJB original Dixieland jazz band um, and my favorite recording of this is the Boswell sisters version um, the reason for that is that if you listen to the form of this music it's only about 20 measures long when you actually get to the chorus after the verse it's only 20 measures long and the Boswell sisters take this 20 measure little tune not super harmonically complex not super melodically complex and they take it and they just rip it apart and this turns into this huge spectacle where they change tempos they change feels they change the lyrics they change the melody and stretch things out for measures and bars and it's wonderful it's really wonderful and it's incredibly creative so I really enjoy that version of it and I recommend you check out the Boswell sister Boswell Sisters recording of Dark Town Strutters Ball. So on that note, I'm going to sing it out to you as I usually do. Um, I'm going to move this to a different key. Uh, G baby, why don't we move to the key of G? Woo. Let's start on a D7. I've got some good news, honey.
you in a taxi, honey. Better be ready about half past eight. Oh, honey, don't you be late. I want to be there when the band starts playing. Remember when we get there, honey. Two steps I'm gonna have in my good days are both my shoes. When they play the heebie-jeebie. All right, there you have it. There's a tune. Thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Bonnie, and I'll see you next time.